Hello, this is Pastor Jason with Raising the Revival Generation and Revival Generation Ministries, and we are going to continue our look into the Gospel of Luke. We are coming out of the Christmas season, and we just had a time of rejoicing and celebrating the gift of Jesus Christ, and we looked at the angels proclaiming to the shepherds, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. This is good news of great joy. And we're going to continue going through the Gospel of Luke. And we're going to continue with Luke chapter 2. Now, I remind you, we're just going through this in little bits and pieces. And uh, just to just so that we can pick up nuggets of, of truth, of God, of God revealing himself through his word that we can pass on to our kids. Because that's the purpose of this. It's to empower us to know the word of God so that we can pass it on to our kids. Hence the name of the podcast, the name of the ministry, Raising the Revival Generation. It's about one generation declaring the excellencies of the works of the Lord, the blessing of God to the next generation. And that's what we're about here at Revival Generation Ministries. And so that's why we've been going through the Gospel of Luke. It's to empower, empower, ah, if I get this out, words are hard. It's to empower us parents to be able to communicate the truth of God's words to our kids, because that's what we are. We are the shepherds of these young little souls that God has ordained life for. And so we need to do the best of our ability. And so we want to empower you, we want to equip you, and we want to go through the Gospel of Luke together so that we can pass it on to our kids. And so here we go. We are looking at Luke, and we are going to begin in, if I can get over there, in verse, I believe we're at 21. Now, Jesus has already been born, and then this is what it says. It said, when the eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus. Now, if you remember, if you go back just a chapter before, when John was born, they had to wait to, to give him his name, and they were thinking that he was going to be named after his father, and then his father, after at the time of circumcision, said, his name will be John. His name will, and he goes on to prophesy, and here Jesus is fulfilling the law. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. Listen, as believers, we don't just abolish the law. We uphold the law even more because we love God, because we obey that greatest commandment of all, which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, right? Because of that, we complete the rest of the law. And because we love our neighbors as ourselves, as Jesus says in the teaching, we don't go around hurting people. We don't lie. We don't steal. We uphold the law in our heart, right? It's not just a checklist. It's we abide by it because we love God. God and we love Jesus. And it's, just, it's the same thing with any relationship you have. You do the things you do when they're motivated out of love for your spouse, for your children. And so here Jesus is fulfilling the law once again. He's not abolishing it. And so it says that he was named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived back in chapter one, right? He will be named Jesus because he's going to save the world from their sins. And here it's fulfilling. The word of God is being fulfilled. The word of God will always come to pass. Even though uh, there, was a, there was a Herod and a, who wanted to kill Jesus, the word of God will be fulfilled. It says, and when the days of the purification, according to the law of Moses, were finished, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it was written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be dedicated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and young pigeons. Now just remember this, Jesus fulfilled the law. He did not sin. Even in his birth, we're seeing the fulfillment of the law. God spoke it and Jesus is going to be in perfect obedience because he lived the life we could not live. Where, we, where the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but Jesus. He lived the life we could not live and died the death that we deserve to die. That's the grace and mercy of God upon our lives. So understand that when you're teaching this to your children. Jesus lived the perfect life for you, for me, and for them. And he died the death that we deserve because of sin for you, for me, and for them. And this is a sign of that. He's fulfilling the law even as a baby. Not one jot or tittle is going to be missed in the life of Jesus. Perfect obedience to the Father. And so let's continue. It says, There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was a righteous and devout. Remember that uh, Mary was found righteous. Uh, Elizabeth and Zechariah were righteous. God works with righteous people. 
He does it all the time, and he's still doing it to this day. He, they were righteous and devout, looking forward to Israel's uh, consolation. And the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he saw the Lord's Messiah. This is great. This is great right here. This righteous man found favor at God and the Holy Spirit was upon his life. This is before Pentecost. The Holy Spirit's speaking to him. The Holy Spirit's leading him. And what we're going to see right here is the Spirit's actually going to guide him right to the Messiah. It says, guided by the Spirit, he entered the Lord's temple. Hallelujah. When the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to perform for him what was customary, ready for this, under the law, it says this, Simeon took him in his arms, praising God. Hallelujah. This man who had lived his whole life longing to see the Messiah takes the Messiah in his arms, this baby, and begins to praise God. And he says, now, Master, you can dismiss your servant in peace as you have promised. For my eyes have seen your salvation. You have prepared it in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. Do you see what he's saying here? He's saying the Holy Spirit had led him and guided and directed him to this very moment. And now he's holding Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, God in flesh. This man is holding him in his arms and he proclaims this. He says, now you can dismiss me because you have fulfilled your promise to me. Great is your faithfulness. And he says, my eyes have seen salvation. This, this baby right here, here is God's redemption plan for the Lord, for the world, a light of revelation to the Gentiles. The Gentiles were going to be saved and he's proclaiming it right here. This man full of the spirit is proclaiming God's plan of salvation for this world. It's through Jesus Christ. Why? Because the angel said in chapter one that he will save the world from their sins. And right here, Simeon is proclaiming that. He says, this is the message of salvation unto us is born in the city of David, a savior who's going to carry the weight of our sin and save us. And he's going to be a revelation to the Gentiles and he's going to bring glory to the people of Israel. Hallelujah. And he goes on to say, it goes on to say this. It says his father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Even though the angel proclaimed it, the word of God is being confirmed and they're amazed. Then Simeon blessed them and told his mother, Mary, Indeed, this child is destined to cause the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed and a sword will pierce your own soul that the thoughts of many hearts may re be revealed. He has a great plan upon his life and many people are going to rise and many people are going to fall because of him. He's going to bring some down, tearing down strongholds and and rulers and nations and all that and he's going to rise up others and the sword will pierce your own soul that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed and then there's another lady named Anna and it goes on to say this there was also a prophet Anna a daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher a prophetess that's amazing God speaking through her she was well along in years, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and was a widow for 84 years. She did not leave the temple serving God night and day with fasting and prayers. At the very moment, she came up and began to thank God and to speak about him to all who were looking forward to the redemption of God. Jerusalem. Now listen, this is God's word. God, is, God has made this promise of salvation for the world. He made it to Abraham way back before the law was even writ written. He said, Abraham, through you, all the nations of the world will be blessed. And all the righteous people up until this time right here, Simeon and Anna, all the righteous people were projected. They were looking forward to what God was going to do. And then right here is the fulfillment of the promise of God. 
and those who had been waiting in eager expectation, the Spirit had led them to this moment. And Simeon right here is holding this baby, this Messiah born in the flesh who's going to save the world of their sin. Great things God is doing. God is still doing great things to this day. And His Spirit is still leading and guiding people to the truth. He leads and guides us in all truth. He leads and guides us to the presence of Jesus Christ. Right here, just like in this story, God's Spirit is still speaking and revealing. He's revealing to you. He's revealing to us. If we, are, if we will be righteous to the promises of God, what we will see is the fulfillment of the Word of God in our life, just like Simeon, just like Anna. If we continue to walk in faithfulness, God's word will unfold and we'll see the hand of God. We'll see the promises of God. This is something we need to tell our children to continue to walk in faith. Though the vision tarry, wait for it, as it says in Micah, because it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Though the vision tarry, don't, don't forget the promises of God, but continue to walk in faithfulness because God's word is yes and amen and nothing can withhold it. It will come to pass. God bless you. God loves you. And God has a wonderful plan for you and your children.